you know, we said, uh, let's come together and uh, just look at ways and frameworks that can help bankers lend in a risk, less risky manner yes. to the sector. And that's how Adapter was born. Now, why are we going to the less traveled places? Mm -hmm. um, we like to say, you know, when we are going to do projects in Tukana, because we have projects in Tukana, in Kerio Valley, in, El in the dry places, in Kajiado, just here, you know, what are we trying to prove is that there is a concept that the, it is possible to actually turn idle land into arable and reliably producing land. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what projects are you doing in those places? So we have uh, across 10 value chains. So we've picked the most staple crops, your maize, beans, tomatoes, onions, everyday crops, and also cash crops like tea. Dairy is also, uh, you know, a cash, uh, you know, yeah. dairy as well. So, and uh, horticulture, yeah. horticultural cro yes. crops, you know, crops in high demand for export. Uh -huh. And we said, instead of trying to prove that uh, tomato can grow well in Kiambu, yeah. why don't we prove that it is possible that the vacant range lands can produce good crop? And when I went to Israel, it actually really inspired me. Yeah, yeah. is that the pin you're wearing? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I'm really. Uh, Where'd yes. you get that pin from? So I, I traveled. I'm, I'm doing a master's in agribusiness uh, management, and I uh, had the good grace to travel to Israel as part of the case study to mm. see how arid agriculture has succeeded. Right. There are so many theories about Israel. You know, oh, they import soil from this place mm. and come and mm -hmm. pour red soil in the desert. No, you find that it's possible to restructure sh soil and to harvest water and to conserve water and to do, you know, very good, reliable agriculture hmm. in the desert, because we know that Israel yes, is a desert. a desert. So I went there partly for just even religious, mm. uh, you mm. know, uh, Spiritual reasons. reasons. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. But also got very inspired from uh, walking through the kibbutzes, mm -hmm. which are actually former desert communities, like our Tukana Samburu Masabit stories, but former desert communities that then would form a core center of a community that can produce food, process uh, what they need in order to sustain this, you know, the circularity. And that really inspired me because you'll find uh, some kibbutzes are as old as in the 40s when Israel gained its independence. And they just get together families and then decide who are growing uh, our daily crops, bananas, who are growing the fruits we need, who are going to keep the cows, who are going to process the milk, mm. who are going to market the milk. And so there's such a nice social system yes. that uh, when we went into projects, doing our own projects, um, especially in the rangelands, mm. we are seeing that that change is becoming. When I, s I talked about fat babies mm. in Tukana, mm -hmm. so if I'm going to Tukana, I'll fly to Lodwa, mm -hmm. then get off and then travel for about... Uh, for, for from the flight about five, six hours mm -hmm. of just bumpy, you know, just, mm. uh, you know, and what you see along the way is very, yeah, it's ju just you know, emaciated mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. just dry places. But when, when you get to the centers where we have our project, it's really a different story completely. And I think also the theory that we want to do as adapter, apart from doing what banks ought to do, you know, mm. cha or rather pioneering yes. the approach that bankers can take to take more interest in the agri sector, yes. we are also really changing uh, the dependence of those regions huh. into self dependence. Yeah, dependence on aid into self dependence. Mm. Because mm. handouts, Catherine, can't work for They're too not, long. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they not can't, sustainable. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, do you work with farmers from those regions? Yeah, we work with farmers uh -huh. and uh, we have what we call a household approach. Okay. So, remember their pastoral lists. So, they'll still want to keep their cows because that's yeah. their sign of wealth. Yeah. But we agree, who can, is it the man of the household who can go on with the pastoral? So we are calling them agro-pastoralists. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so the, the, you're not breaking their culture and their known systems. Remember, this is inherited. It's very hard to tell people, dump your cows yeah. and start this. Yeah. And, and remember, yeah. these cows were really dying during the drought. Yeah? Yeah. But anyway, we show them that you can grow grass. So one half of the family, because they have large families, uh, there's a lady out there I love uh, called Selena. She has 10 children, some are grown. They're getting educated. So those that are out of school can actually help her plant grass. They don't need to go so far right. into really risky terrain to graze cows. It's possible and, you know, grass is a really great carbon sequestrator. Mm. So growing grass is helping them feed the cows, having them more, you know, more 
occupied yeah. and also you know providing feed for the cows and making sure that uh, yeah. the family is uh, involved yes. in economic yes. uh, practices okay so we kind of have merged into the communities and what they do naturally i know it's hard but you saw my photos <laughs> it's hard to believe yeah. that this banker green <laughs> but yeah. yeah it's amazing when you see the change happening yeah yeah some of them uh like these are there's a family which, well, lost their person in Tukana because of cattle rustling and all this. Um, and also such things you'll come find that they are happening and mm. see that there's a better way. Instead of mm. people fighting for grazing land and watering holes, yeah. it's possible to turn where you are at yeah. into more productive use. Yeah. yeah.